Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for the opportunity to share my experience on combining medial pivot knee with kinematic alignment. Um, can I see a quick show of hands? Uh, how many surgeons out there uh, consider uh, themselves using some sort of uh, kinematic alignment? So I think that you know over the years this, probably, this number has probably increased some. I think there's a, a little bit more uh, utilization of that in Europe. Um, and how many surgeons here utilize a medial stabilized knee? All right, awesome. So um, here's my, my disclosures. Um, here's a disclaimer slide. And quick uh, overview, a lot of this is gonna be uh, repetitive. Um, hopefully something uh, you can pick up. So obviously we do total knees uh, to reduce pain and improve function. Uh, projections in 2007 stated, uh, projected, uh, predicted that 3.5 million total knees would be performed in the US in 2030. Those have been scaled back a little bit, but still 1.25 million total knees. Uh, you know, we think of the knee, we describe in med school initially as it's a hinge. Um, and we know obviously it's not so much that. It's not even a fancy hinge when you can dial in a little bit, uh, a better alignment. Um, so as we heard earlier, there's about 20% dis dissatisfaction in some papers. Uh, this kind of lines up with the 80-20 rule. This was described by uh, Vilfredo Pareto. 80% uh, of the wealth in Italy belong to 20% of the population. And so that kind of carries over to what we're doing. If we do the same thing for everybody, um, it seems to be good enough um, some 80% of the time. Um, what are some of the predictors? I won't belabor this, but you know, expectations. Uh, if those aren't met by the patient um, from the surgery, then uh, there may be a higher risk of dissatisfaction. And if the patient is uh, having a poorly functioning knee at one year. Um, so is our job just expectation management? And should we just be lowering the bar? Um, no, I don't think so. I think at this, you know, as we improve our technique and improve implants, uh, we will improve our outcomes. Um, so if you have 1.26 million uh, knees being done yearly and 20% are dissatisfied, that's a, a quarter million, uh, over a quarter million patients that are gonna be unhappy. That's quite a tremendous number. Um, but so on the flip side, why are uh, total hips satisfied um, and why are unis, uh, unicompartmental knee arthroplasties, uh, these reports typically show patients are much more satisfied. I think it truly uh, is because they respect the soft tissue. Um, what happens when you don't respect the soft tissue in a total hip? You end up with leg length discrepancies, you end up with trochanteric bursitis, and even dislocations. Uh, when you do a uni um, and it uh, doesn't respect the soft tissues, you may have early failure, lateral compartment pain, decreased range of motion. So um, looking at the knee, uh, it's a little bit more complex than a hinge. And as, I'm, as everybody knows, there's a, six uh, degrees of freedom of motion about the knee. And I, I believe that the uh, implant can solve uh, about half of those uh, motions. You know, it's, and, and I kind of think of the uh, hinge, uh, the knee as more, a little bit more complex, like the dreaded corner cabinet in the kitchen. Um, so we have the medial pivot knee, um, and you know, quick slide imitation is the uh, is the highest form of flattery, and it is just coincidence that many companies are coming out with a medial stabilized knee. No, I think it's because uh, they realize the uh, the importance of this design. Um, this is an early uh, knee uh, replacement that I performed um, with the uh, medial pivot evolution. And this is done um, just mechanical alignment. And so inherently you can see the stability imparted by the um, conformity of the implant. That's especially in the AP translation. Um, but also as described earlier, there's a rotational component uh, about the medial condyle. So this design in and of itself can provide uh, those degrees of uh, controls and those degrees of freedom. Um, what's the other half of the equation? I think it's combining it with kinematic alignment. So what is kinematic uh, kinematics? It's the uh, branch of mechanics concerned with the motion of objects without reference to the forces uh, which cause the motion. Um, 
I think that's the best definition that I, you know, I've come across. But basically, when it uh, gets translated into the surgical technique, uh, we're doing a true measured resection. Uh, we're replacing the missing cartilage, the removed cartilage and the removed bone with the thickness of the femoral implant. Um, you know, as described earlier, there's different ways to go about it, uh, but really I've, I believe that um, you have to start with the femur and, and then you resurface it back to its pre-arthritic alignment. And again, you can make arguments whether you should do restricted, uh, perhaps to, to uh, minimize the risk of having a pathologic alignment that led to the, the arthritic state, uh, or you could do unrestricted. Um, the surgical technique avoids ligamented releases, you know, so, you know, you can imagine a, 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 a uni compartmental knee or a total hip, uh, you know, we're generally not releasing IT band, we're not, you know, stripping too much of the MCL, uh, so we're balancing the, the tibia to the femoral side and uh, with, you know, uh, microports technique, you're actually able to balance the medial and lateral gaps and then translate that. And I think really that's the power of this surgical technique. It's that you're linking um, the tibial side of the surgery to the femoral side. You're not doing two separate surgeries and just hoping that they kind of match up. Um, borrowed this uh, slide from uh, Dr. Howell's textbook, but again, describing the uh, axes of rotation about the knee. Um, you know, why, why did we do mechanical alignment? Um, you know, I think that it was easy to teach. You know, we didn't have good instrumentation. Um, you know, it, it was reproducible, avoided uh, medial collapse, uh, theoretically. Um, but at what cost? Are those issues still relevant today? More recent biomechanical studies show decreased adductor moments in the knee with a tibial base plate that's placed uh, parallel to the ground. Um, and really, a mechanical alignment, we're chasing the, the, the 90 degree cut of the tibia and we're compensating that uh, through, the mechanic, uh, through the placement of the femoral component. But we know uh, that a high proportion of patients, uh, people are uh, varus in alignments, uh, and that only 3% of uh, lower extremities are what we consider mechanically aligned and a match up with our uh, total knee uh, traditional alignment. So, you know, one size does not fit all. I think that personalized alignment will really uh, just take into consideration the patient's anatomy. Uh, combining the two uh, will allow us to really hit the target with high precision and high accuracy, uh, really moving uh, along our, uh, improving our outcomes. The uh, technique here with, uh, that I've been utilizing uh, measures the distal uh, femoral thickness cartilage. I think this is important rather than assuming that all distal femur cartilage is a two millimeters thick. Um, some studies show that it can be up to three to four millimeters. And then you can uh, really restore that with your, either your mechanical instrumentation or utilize some sort of uh, computer assistance. Uh, it may be heresy to think of placing the femoral component in neutral rotation relative to the, to the posterior condylar axis, uh, but this really, again, restores that cylindrical uh, motion. Um, one more time, kind of uh, determining the tibial resection depends on the placement of these uh, spoons in the medial lateral compartments and uh, uh, using a double stylus to translate that cut to the tibial side. I think that's unique and uh, definitely has uh, actually made my surgical technique more efficient uh, with less recuts um, in surgery. So again, uh, I think that we're able to really address all six degrees of motion. And you know, if, if, I think if you ask yourself, how many cadaver labs have you done? Um, and where you're like, you know, uh, the patient's gonna love it. And then where you just crank down full extension, you, you just you know, compress subchondral uh, frozen you know, cadaveric bone to get that full extension. Uh, this is the first time I was truly satisfied uh, with a uh, cadaver knee. So you can just see taking through the range of motion, you can see the conformity on the medial side. You can see just, um, it was, uh, you know, no recuts or anything and no, uh, uh, no manipulations. So um, real quick, just, you know, when I took on this new te technique, um, it was pretty much the same amount of time as uh, my previous mechanical alignment knees. If you take out the last two uh, patients in the orange, um, you can actually see that it essentially lined up in, in terms of the, the amount of surgical time. Um, outcome studies, you know, we've already talked about it. Um, kinematic alignment, patients prefer that. Um, and that was a 2017 meta-analysis. And again, uh, more uh, recent literature came out in 2022, looking at both uh, mechanical alignment versus kinematic and uh, kinematic alignment uh, with a PS knee and a, a 
medial stabilized knee, which we'll actually hear about more at this, uh, in this meeting. So um, we'll skip cases, but thank you very much for your time.